Hi, so in video 1236, we made this thing. Now, if you're thinking that looks like a potato or lemon battery that's been a little souped up, then you're being fooled by it, actually, and don't be fooled by it. Just because it looks so sort of, well, basic and homespun, doesn't mean that the battery in here isn't a serious contender. The battery in here actually is super impressive. But the thing is, uh, I have this attitude. I don't want to show how marvellously complex things are, how clever you have to be in order to do them, and what a super guy I am because I can do these wonderful things. That is no interest to me at all. What I'm really interested in is showing how simple it can be. How with a little bit of creativity, a little bit of nouns, a little bit of effort, you can repeat and do these things that are serious and can do a real job. And this is an example of that. So although it looks a little bit basic, actually it's a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing. The energy density here is around about 60 to 80 watt hours a kilo. If you think about that, lead acid is 20 to 20, 25 to 40 watt hours a kilo. Lithium is 100 to 125 watt hours per kilo. And this sits right there, proudly at the lithium end, being 60 to 80 watt hours a kilo. So it'll store a tremendous amount of energy. And of course, that hasn't escaped everybody's notice, because although this battery is in a venerable old battery beginning in uh, the early eight, 19th century, so like 1830, 1840, somewhere around about there, it is, believe it or not, at the cutting edge of what they're doing now. So this has been investigated for um, automotive applications. If you remember in the 1970s, they used zinc and chlorine. Now they're investigating this and there's some prototypes using zinc and bromine to go into cars. There's a company called Redflow that sell this stuff already where it's being used in a flow battery, but it's exactly the same thing. And they're being able to sell that all over the world. And of course, the Australians did something where they stuck some jelly in here and turned this into a very energy dense, small, flexible battery. So this is right at the edge, it's right there at the cutting edge of battery uh, research development being looked at by automotive and serious energy contenders for energy storage and grid stabilisation. So although it looks a bit like a lemon battery, I think it's a very approachable battery for anybody to be able to make. And like I say, I'm interested in showing how easy something can be not how difficult it must be. It's really easy to do this. That's the whole point of this battery. It's really easy. If you want to improve it, then of course you can improve it, and you're going to improve it as you learn more about it, because there's a ton of research on this, giving you all kinds of facts and figures, including cost comparisons. So if you want to improve this, a simple improvement actually is to use titanium mesh for this bit. We used a bit of zinc. But if you use titanium mesh, that's the modern material that's been used. That or carbon. So you've got a carbon and a carbon. Either of those are straightforward, simple improvements. Of course, that would raise the cost. And cost is always an issue, but there's always two elements to cost. There's the cost of purchase, and then there's the cost of running it. So clearly, if I buy something for 10 quid, it's much cheaper than buying something for £100. But if that thing I buy for £10 lasts a week, and the one that I bought for £100 lasts 27 years, then <laughs> we know which one's more economic. It's oddly enough the more expensive one. So just the fixed price of it doesn't really help you. But in these terms, the fixed price of this is going to be something around about 50 60, watt hour, uh, 50, 60 dollars per kilowatt hour. Lead acid's supposed to be about... I think it's uh, 50 to 75 watt hours. Lithium has just broken the $100 per watt hour barrier. Sorry, per kilowatt hour barrier. So this is actually cheaper than most of the rest of it. But there's something really, really interesting about this. This stuff here, this electrolyte, which is going to be the bulk of your cost. Remember, it's, it's a couple of jars, but the most of it is the cost of the electrolyte right there. That essentially lasts forever. I mean, you'll get 27 years out of that, no worries at all. <laughs> I said 27 years because 27 years is about 10,000 cycles. But you should get a million cycles out of that. That's 236 years. Somebody posted a comment, how do you dispose of it? My immediate thought was, why would you want to? That's liquid gold. Why would you throw that away? Never wears out. And it makes sense when you think about it. It's a plating and stripping battery. It plates on one side, then it reacts to go straight back where it came from. Bit more energy, plate again, react straight back where it comes out. It just does that forever. Now, that's just not me saying that. There's a lot of research showing that. So there's people like Red Flow who are actually being able to do that. 
So when thinking about that longevity, or if you like, levelised cost of energy stored, this knocks the rest out of the ballpark because of the life of the electrolyte. You're talking about cents, even parts of a cent per kilowatt, uh, per, per kilowatt hour put through. Whereas other batteries fade in comparison. And Redflow have done a long-term study of this showing that this is actually much cheaper than lithium. Which is why it's being really investigated and why it's really interesting. So when you look at something like this, and like I say, you, you immediately think, hey, that's a bit handmade, a bit homespun, a bit lemon and potato, then don't be fooled by it. Have a think about what it is, have a read around it. If you have a read around this, you'll find a lot of work on it. I'm just showing you how simple it can be, because it can be stunningly easy. I mean, it can be stunningly complex, that's for sure. But the point is, in order to get something worth it, it doesn't have to be. Anyway, I thought I'd share those thoughts with you because I thought they were an important thing to add for folk. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.